A few days ago, Home Assistant hosted Chapter 5 of Year of the Voice, which brought in some nice additions to the local voice capabilities, and thus marked the end of Year of the Voice for Home Assistant as 2023 also comes to an end. Now, if you're new to Home Assistant or you haven't been following along, at the beginning of 2023, Home Assistant announced they were making this year Year of the Voice, which essentially meant that their kind of overall mission and focus for this year was adding local voice capabilities to Home Assistant, which it was previously lacking. And it didn't mean that all they were going to do this year was voice control and nothing else. We certainly got lots of nice upgrades this year that weren't voice related, but voice was kind of like the main quest, where there were still lots of side quests that they completed along the way too. So as mentioned, Chapter 5 added some great additions to voice in Home Assistant. The first one I wanted to show you has to do with the new firmware that is available for a device called the ESP32 S3 Box 3, which is a device with a really confusing name, but it's also sold from Espressive, makers of the ESP32, that now has support for controlling your smart home with it using ESP Home. Inside the S3 Box, there is an ESP32 S3, two microphones, a speaker, a USB-C port, and a 2.4 inch touch display. And that's one of the important things in this update is that display can now be customized with images to make it easier to see when assist is listening, processing, and completing commands successfully. Kind of like the indicator LEDs on an Amazon Echo, for example, you can quickly glance at it to see what's going on. They also showed off making custom images and even showed how you can turn an image of Frank into your own personal assistant, which was pretty hilarious, but it does give you some nice flexibility there. If you have an S3 Box 3 or the original S3 Box or Box Lite, then there is now a web page that will take you through installing the firmware to get you up and running with this inside of Home Assistant in just a matter of minutes, assuming you have your voice pipeline set up inside of Home Assistant, which I did a video about recently if you haven't seen that. Just a quick note that I am personally running into an issue where it seems to stop the pipeline on the S3 box after giving three voice commands in quick succession and won't work till I restart it for some reason, but the commands work great before that. I'm assuming this is just something with my unit or my home assistant server or perhaps a bug that will get resolved soon. The S3 box has dual microphones inside, but as far as I understand, they aren't in use just yet but they are working on taking advantage of those in a future ESP Home release. But some of the Nabucasa team did say that they noticed improvements with the better microphones and speakers inside of the S3 box compared to the M5 Echo, which is a lot more space constrained. And the idea with these is that you would buy a bunch of them and kind of have them in each room of your house to provide local voice control for each room. That actually really links us nicely to the next new feature that kind of goes hand in hand with that which is that Assist can now be aware of which room you are in when you give voice commands, which is amazingly useful and something that I've had lots of people ask me if it was possible. Well, now it is. So now if you assign an area to your voice control devices, the S3 box or the Echo, for example, instead of having to, tur to say, turn off the kitchen lights or turn off the living room lights, you can just say, turn off the lights and Home Assistant will know which area that device is in and control the lights in that area without you having to get specific, which is an amazing addition and will open up lots of possibilities in the future. As far as I know, it only seems to be limited to lights at the moment. I tried asking about temperature, for example, and it gives me back a random temperature sensor that isn't even assigned to any area. And if I disable that sensor, it gives me a different random one. And then if I disable that one, it gives me a temperature from a different room. Despite that I have a sensor called kitchen temperature assigned to the kitchen area. So at the moment it seems to be limited to light only, but I think this will certainly be expanded down the road. Imagine how cool it would be asking for the temperature or saying set the thermostat to 21 and it just changes the thermostat in that room or play Spotify and it just starts playing on the speaker in that room. That will be amazing and I think that's eventually where this feature will end up heading towards but light is a great place to start and probably the most common one. So yeah, makes sense. Speaking of new sentences, there was also some new sentences added, including asking for an item to be added to your task list, asking for the inside temperature, asking for the weather. That's a big one that people have been asking for, pun intended. 
and also asking to cancel a voice command if you change your mind. Great to see the standard voice commands expanded, and also remember that if there is something that you want that's not included in those standard commands, you can always create more with an automation using the sentence trigger. Last but not least, there is also the ability to use Raspberry Pis as a remote satellite now, which was technically possible before but did have some drawbacks. However, now they are fully supported and work very similar to ESP Home based devices, and just like ESP Home based devices, it also supports always streaming, but in addition, it also supports stream on speech, which is where it will start streaming the microphone after it detects that some sort of voice activity is happening, which it will then presumably do the wake word on Home Assistant, or it also supports local wake word detection on the Raspberry Pi 2, which is awesome. That would be a whole video in itself on setting one of those up. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see that, but really cool that this is now possible in Home Assistant and that should be a big help. So those are the new changes in Home Assistant for voice as Year of the Voice comes to an end, but don't worry, that doesn't mean that Mike is now packing his bags and voice is over for Home Assistant. Voice is still going to be continually worked on and a part of Home Assistant going forward, same as any other core feature is. And they even showed off a bit of a roadmap at the end of a live stream of things that they would like to tackle at some point. No timeframes given, but just things that they would like to be able to do, which were timers, so being able to say, set a timer for 10 minutes and having that happen, local wake word detection on the S3 box, so having it doing the wake word processing directly on the ESP rather than streaming it to Home Assistant, improved error handling to make it a bit more clear why something didn't work as you intended it to happen, AI or large language model integrations, so be maybe being able to ask ChatGPT to control something for example, and finally their own custom hardware for voice which will presumably have local wake word detection on it too, but probably a bit more of a finished, polished product than some of the DIY stuff we've seen so far. Definitely some interesting stuff on the horizon that I'm looking forward to seeing. There we go, that is the new voice updates in Home Assistant. Figured it was a good opportunity to just sit down and chat to you guys about these updates to round out a year of the voice and since there was some really nice stuff here, I'm a big fan of the new room awareness feature and that is gonna be a really interesting one to see where that goes in the future. And I'm also really looking forward to seeing what the next year of is gonna be. Do you have any guesses as to what that is gonna be? If I had to guess, and I really actually don't know, I don't have any insider information, I would guess something like year of the dashboard or year of the UI, something like that. That would probably be the area I would say is in most need of improvement in my humble opinion. Be really interested to see if you guys have any other cool suggestions, do drop them down below in the comments. Other than that, thank you for watching this quick video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.